So today I actually wanted to talk about a game called Lost Words Beyond the Page on Stadia. It's actually a one year timed exclusive for Stadia and it came out back on March 27th. This was created by Sketchbook Games who's worked on other titles such as Fable 2, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Ukulele. This game falls into the narrative adventure genre and revolves around a girl named Izzy and her writing in her journal which eventually takes you to the land of Astoria where players use words to solve challenging puzzles and they also make decisions that shape the story. So with that being said, let's start the review. So as usual, we'll begin with the story. The story is actually pretty interesting and it revolves around a girl named Izzy who loves to write in her journal. She also enjoys spending time with her grandma who fuels her curiosity and her overall fun loving nature. Izzy also begins writing a story which is where the platforming puzzle solving part of the game takes place. The story surrounds a village girl who has been chosen to become the next fairy guardian from her elder Ava and was the previous guardian. As she starts to make her way to the fairy temple to take her place as the fairy guardian, the village temple and the world itself is pretty much being attacked and destroyed by a fire breathing dragon. So that begins her quest to hunt down the dragon while also collecting all the lost fairies along the way. The story is affected by Izzy's real life situations as you get to see on a deeper level as the story unfolds. As you learn that Izzy's grandma ends up having a stroke, you can see how not only it affects Izzy, but it affects your character in the story she's writing as well. As her real life is quite happy until her grandmother's stroke, symbolized by the dragon, which begins to destroy that reality as she knows it. And her character's quest for fairies symbolizes her own quest to do pretty much anything she can to help her grandmother overcome the stroke and restore the peace and happiness that she once knew. So that brings us to the graphics. Uh, Lost Words is actually one of those beautifully artistic style games to where it doesn't really rely on realism in order to wow you, but instead looks to impress you with being a more of a interactive piece of art. From his 2D, almost watercolor style, Lost Words is another notch in the belt of it doesn't need to push the graphical boundaries in order to provide the same eye-pleasing experience that other games do. The gameplay revolves around using the power of words in order to overcome your obstacles. Whereas most games use characters' physical abilities like their agility, their strength, or maybe a superhuman talent or gift, this game takes another course to show words can be just as effective something anyone can use to move forward and not just the only the strong will survive aspect acknowledging weakness is not weak yet a strength how can one become strong if not by overcoming a weakness similar to bravery not being the absence of fear but yet the realization that your goal or your drive is actually more important or more powerful than that fear so with the focus being primarily on that there are a little slight hiccups that occur regarding the platforming aspect. During the first stage in the sand area, you're able to progress without getting a magical word that you need to pass that area. Uh, this proved to be a soft lock instance as there was really no other way to return other than starting again from the last save area, which was slightly mitigated since the game actually does a good job of auto saving quite frequently. The controls for this game are okay, but they're not particularly the greatest, especially when you're playing with the controller. Due to the fact that you have to control a firefly, much like you would a mouse cursor, to select and interact with words or other things in the environment. I feel like this probably would play a lot better if you were using a mouse and keyboard, because sometimes the character can feel a little cumbersome at times, especially when you're required to move the character and the cursor simultaneously. Since, of course, you move the character with the left analog stick and you have to move the cursor or the firefly with your right analog stick. This game actually has a little bit of a replay value because as you progress through the story, you actually have the option to choose the character's name and other parts of the story that Izzy's writing from a selection of words on the screen. So at the beginning, when you choose a name and the look of your character, you actually get to see those changes manifest on the screen as part of her design, which gives it a nice touch. Also, with the ability to choose other parts of the story that make up the story itself, it gives you the feeling that you are also helping to write the story. So you can always go back and make other selections if you're curious with how these things would change the situations you find yourself in in the story. So before I give you my final thoughts on the game, I actually want to warn you that this is actually the more spoiler heavy section of the review. So if you don't want the game 
you know ruined for you then you might want to skip this part or just go ahead and leave the video now so for those of you who aren't worried about that or maybe you've already played the game and just want to hear somebody else's take on it well here we go uh, I must say I was actually surprised with how much the game actually resonated with me on a personal level as I mentioned earlier regarding the deeper aspect of the story you actually come to realize that this game is about how one copes with loss or grief as Izzy's grandma eventually dies due to the stroke she suffered Izzy begins her descent into the five stages of grief which are influencing each part of the story Izzy writes as you play so for the first stage we come to denial uh, in this part of the story you are overcoming a mad djinn that doesn't want you to progress any further but instead of him outright attacking you he's almost more concerned with keeping you away almost rather denying your existence so similar to izzy denying the fact that her grandma dying could even be possible or real so the second stage of this game actually coincides with the second stage of grief which is anger. So stage two brings us into a lava filled area full of chaos and a raging fire enveloped girl whose only goal is really to wreck everything around her because of her anger of being alone. So the same anger that Izzy feels thinking her grandma has left her alone and the anger from her mom and dad seemingly accepting that grandma's actually dead instead of mirroring her feelings that this could not be possible. So we come to find out that this fiery girl in this lava cave is actually going through similar things and both of them are just having this uncontrollable anger that needs to be quelled. Uh, stage three of the game actually coincides with stage three of grief and that stage is the bargaining stage. So this brings us face to face with two long forgotten ancient merchants who can help our quest but as long as our character gives them something in exchange. So as we are deciding what things to give that meets their criteria, Izzy is also coping with the bargaining stage of grief. Remembering a time she upset her grandmother and other decisions she made and wondering if maybe she would have done something different or just did as she was told, maybe this wouldn't have happened. And this really kind of relates to the whole what if part that a lot of people go through when they are in the bargaining stages of grief. And this brings us to stage four, which is actually the stage of depression. So after we provide all the things needed so we can get past the merchants, we drown further in grief and are haunted by it in the form of a wolf-like creature. Color is gone from the world, symbolizing the absence of happiness and joy since Izzy's grandma died. Both Izzy and our character are seemingly lost and unable to move forward or overcome this unending sadness. And that brings us to the final stage of grief, which is the final stage of the game, and that is acceptance. So that begins with us still wallowing in depression when all of a sudden a whale-like creature who provides guidance to help our character overcome this sadness by reminding her of all the things she has done up to this point that she's strong and that there is actually still much happiness left in the world even after such a drastic change. I believe the whale is not actually her grandma but yet all the good memories of her time spent with her grandma and the lessons and the wisdom instilled in her as well. So she uses these as almost a way to kind of self assess and this whole dialogue sequence with the whale brings us to the final area where our character finally comes face to face with the dragon that she's been searching for this entire time only to have to accept that the dragon cannot be defeated and the land cannot be saved that this is just a part of life no different from anything else that it too will pass and even though nothing will be the same she can still learn to be happy while keeping the memories alive we see Izzy coming to the same conclusion during her time at the funeral, realizing that her grand wouldn't want her to be sad. And even though she lost her grand, she still has all the memories of their time together. So she's accepting that, yeah, nothing will ever fix the hole from losing her grandmother, but realizing that it's nothing wrong with that either. Now, in the beginning, I said that this game actually came as a surprise to me because it really wasn't a surprise of it being a great fun game, but it was more of a surprise of I didn't realize how emotionally I would be able to relate to this game. Being someone who has lost a loved one, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who's lost loved ones as well. But playing through this game, I came in thinking that it was going to be a storybook game, maybe kind of childlike, and I was just going to enjoy the artwork and maybe a little bit of the platforming. 
but I really didn't expect the game to pretty much make me go back and rethink and refeel all those things that I felt when I was going through the same thing back then. The game actually does a really good job of actually putting you in that place and making you almost go through all those stages of grief again. And even though they may not sound like a good thing, it actually is kind of refreshing at the end of it. Um, I mean, you even start off with, you can really relate to uh, Izzy looking at her grandma as almost like a untouchable, like immortal figure. And that's usually how we look at our parents or other people that's really close to us, like our loved ones. Like you can see a lot of bad things happen, but you would never expect something like that to happen to them. And then if they do get sick, when you see them, they're not really what they used to be to you anymore. Like you can't even fathom seeing them in this sickly stage because they've always been like a pillar of strength to you. And after that, as it comes all the way around to the final stage of acceptance, obviously you going back through that, if you're someone who can relate to this, it's not gonna be as bad when you first went through it, but it's a good way to kind of tie you into the game and tie you in emotionally with the character because if you have been through it, then you can relate to exactly what she's going through the whole time you're playing the game. With all that being said, I think this was actually a really good game, especially for $15, uh, but because I could personally relate to it. So if you're someone who can't relate to this, then I'm not sure exactly how much you would enjoy the game because the actual platforming and gameplay of it is not the strength. The story's the strength. So being able to relate to the story would definitely help the game kind of stand out to you and be a little more memorable. Other than if you're someone who hasn't been through this yet and it's just gonna be playing through a game story to you. I feel like it doesn't do a good job to actually reach out and touch you if you're not someone who can relate to it. Hopefully this review helped anybody out there who was thinking about getting the game, uh, decide if they actually wanted to get it or not. Or maybe if you're somebody who's already beaten the game and you just wanted to see, you know, what did someone else take away from this or how did they feel about the game or feel about the story as a whole. And maybe I gave you a different avenue or a different piece of the story that you didn't come away with when you beat the game so if either of those you know apply to you then that's great and like i said i hope hope it was helpful um so if you did enjoy the video please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and with that i'm out